Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at how the ranks of the theatre organ work and also go through the different families of instruments to try and get a better understanding of how the ensembles and solos and different registrations can be made. Now, when we start playing theatre organs, we have to understand how they're different from traditional church organs. Well, church organs generally work with lower wind pressures going into the pipes. We also have very different styles of pipe work. We have different uh, sort of families, but there's not a huge difference between the two instruments, except that the theatre organ uses these things down here, the tremulants. And of course, as we know, pipe organs do have tremulants, but they're not um, used quite in the same way as they are in a theatre organ. So to start off with, the fundamental tone in a church organ is the diapason, the principle. So here it is at eight and four on the grate. And this is the kind of thing you get on a Sunday in church. Let's put a, a, a a board on and an eight foot flute on the pedals. So your typical church organ tone there. And we have those in theatre organs. But in a cinema organ, or a theatre organ as we call it, the fundamental sound is not the diapason, it's the tibia. Now Wurlitzers used to make these from wood, Compton, uh, which is a British organ made, they did these from metal. Uh, most of the manufacturers that made tibias found that the wood did make the best sound. Now when you play it without a tremulant, it kind of sounds like a sort of a stopped flute rank. Not particularly interesting, until we switch on this button down here, the tremulant for the tibia, and that does this. Because they found when it was properly trimmed, it made a beautiful, rich tone. Now the tibia, because it has such a good sound when it's trimmed properly, it actually blends with virtually everything in the instrument. It's a bit like having strings in an, in an orchestra. They kind of go with everything. Now, in a cinema organ, we don't have one set of pipes under each of these stops, because in a church organ, if you have a diapason rank, you have 61, if there's 61 keys, let's assume, on your organ, you'll have all of these are diapason pipes. The lowest one, of course, being eight feet. Now when you then add in a four foot diapason, the octave, you're then bringing in a second set of the same pipes, but the lowest one is only four feet long. So every time you push a key, you're actually hearing two pipes there. Now the difference with a cinema organ is they use a thing known as unification, or it's the extension system. So what you do is you have one set of pipes, let's go with our tibia at eight foot, Okay, and we have 61 keys on a standard theatre organ keyboard. The lowest one is 8 foot, and all the way to the top there. Now if I want to play 4 foot, what they simply did was added another 12 pipes on the end to extend the rank. So 61 then becomes 73. So when we switch on the tibia 4, what the switching does in the relay system is it basically adds in this extra set of pipes. So this was a very clever way that the cinema organ works because it, it means you don't have to have as many pipes as you do in a church organ, which makes the organ cheaper to build and of course easy to fit into small spaces. So then when you have the two foot tibia, which is over here, you add another 12 pipes onto the end. So we're going 61, 73, 85. And you've guessed it, if you go the other way, down to 16, you then add another set in 97. And that's what we would call a tibia ensemble. Let me just add a couple of simple stops on the bottom here, something like this maybe. Very nice sound there from the tibia. So in a theatre organ, the fundamental 
tone, the foundation stop is the tibia, normally the tibia clauser. Now, sometimes when you're playing 16 foots, the 16 foot only goes down into this octave here. And if you go any further, it actually stops playing. So sometimes it will say on the stop 10C, and that's short for tenor clef. And that means that it only plays in that octave below. So that's the first family. We then move on to the diapasons. And as we said, the diapason, because it's a quintessential sound from the church organ, it obviously found its way into the uh, theatre organ. But of course, if we put the main trem on, we will then get a nice little, little bit of a wobble there. But it's not, it doesn't tend to be pretty well, it does not really trem the diapason in, in a theatre organ. It's a slight vibrato in the back there. That adds a little bit of a cutting sound to it. Now, completing the, um, the sort of the flu uh, lineup, we then have the concert flu, very nice soft. Uh, little tone from the uh, instrument and that sounds a little bit like this Now many people say that sounds a little bit like a tibia and you're not wrong So the four foot flute can be used almost like a, a half size half strength tibia By the way the organ that we're using here is a three manual ten rank virtual theatre organ We have ten ranks of pipes, 10 different tone colours. So in a small organ you only tend to get one tibia and that tibia tends to be large scale so it is quite powerful and it does tend to overpower the accompaniment with the chord so only use that one there if you've got a really big ensemble on the grate but we'll talk about that in a little while. So the flute uh, goes up to four foot and it also goes to two foot but if you notice it's, it's tibia like The flute tends to live in the main chamber, so you have to have the main um, trem on. And we've got um, um, one, two, three, four, five tremulants in this organ. Smaller organs have three, three or four maybe, um, but uh, the tibia tends to have it uh, its own, but the flute will be in the main chamber. So let's then now move on to the strings. You'll have a string rank in a small organ, violin. In this case, we've got a gamba. Nice clean sound and we also have a celeste. Now this is a this is actually a separate rank. It's the same but it's tuned slightly sharp and you've probably seen these vox uh, um, uh, what have they got a lot of church organ you have uh, gamba and the voix celeste, vox celeste. And yeah that's that lovely undulating sound there. And available with a 16 foot extension. Very nice. And we've also got a four foot, no Celeste on this one. Lovely shimmering sound there. So let's just recap so far. We've got the tibia at 16, 8, 4 and 2. I've also got a one foot extension, but you wouldn't get that normally in a, in a 10 rank organ. That's quite uh, normally something you tend to find on bigger organs. But it's unified and it's extended all the way across those pitches. We have the diapason to give us our pipe organ foundation at uh, similar to the church organ and a softer sound from the flute. The string style comes courtesy of the gamba or the violin or whatever it may be. And the final family is the reeds. Now these are often imitative of their real instruments. Let me turn the trems off. Here's the clarinet. And that was one of the most successful ranks of pipes to imitate and that's quite nice for things like this. And we do have uh, the ability to have a, we've got a, a tremulant on this. But without the trem, it, it has a very close resemblance to its it's orchestral counterpart. So that can be quite clever in orchestral pieces. We then have an oboe, an orchestral oboe. And again, if we put the trem on, that goes away like that, very nice. 
quite a thin sound, the oboe. And the, uh, the other rank that we have is a vox humana. And if you know your Latin, that means human voice. And we have to use our imagination with this. Well, that could be quite clever if you play with the eight foot vox down here. You can get some quite nice kind of tenor sounds. And you imagine a sort of a throaty tenor voice there, so that's quite clever. We then have some slightly uh, noisier ranks. You'll have a, a trumpet or maybe a tuba. That sounds like a style D word, it's a trumpet incidentally. And you tend to find those at 16s and 8s. And then you might have something a bit punchier. Uh, there is an English horn. And that's very noisy. You might have a trumpet rank as well. So those are the, the basic um, three sort of families. The flues, the tibias, the diapasons and the flutes, the strings and the celestes, you've got the, the gamba here, and then the reeds, the trumpets, clarinets, oboes, voxes and uh, things like that. So you then have to come to the point of mixing these together. So how do we do that? Well, we'll have a look at that in another video. But just to get you started, let me show you some nice combinations. Let's go with some registrations I've uh, done uh, in the true style of a, of a TV program we used to have, uh, well, it's still running over here, actually called Blue Peter. Um, they used to show you how to make things at home. And the, the famous phrase was, and here's one I made earlier. <laughs> which was made by the professional stagehand in the TV studio. So here's one I made earlier, and here we've got uh, the strings at 16, the, the vox, uh, and that is, that's all it is, just the strings and the voxes. Beautiful shimmering sound. Lovely tones there from the voxes and the strings. Uh, we could then do 16 foot tibia, strings, 4 foot tibia, that gives you a tone like this. Here how the tibia is very powerful. And as you add more ranks, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, very, very nice. The last family of instruments that you will find in a cinema organ is the percussion family. Now, these, of course, are not, use, uh, not, not using pipes. These use the real thing, uh, controlled by the organ action. So, we have a xylophone. And we can also make that uh, reiterate. We have a glockenspiel. We have a soft hammered style, a bit like a, it's a bit like a kind of a, a hammer vibraphone called a chrysoglot. That's very pretty on the accompaniment. And we also have in this organ a marimba harp. Something you tended to find in the bigger instruments. So as you get to understand the theatre organ ranks, you then start to get more used to actually mixing them. Any of the registrations we just looked at, if we go back to that one we had at the beginning, and let's finish off with this, 16, 8, 4 and 2 foot tibias, that can be made bigger by um, using the um, rank, uh, the octave coupler. And what the octave coupler does, it adds on extra pipes. So you also have these extensions. This is what happens when I put the octave on, 
I'm going to hear lots of high pipes. Right up into the very high um, level. So the octave coupler is a very useful one. Just a simple add of that to any registration. Watch this back to that third one we had. Look. Let's add the octave onto that and instantly we go into sort of four foots and two foot gambers. Make some lovely sounds uh, from the instrument. Here's the octave. Make some very nice sounds uh, from the instrument. And as you get more familiar with how the families work, the flues, the, the flutes and the tibias, the string family, the reed family, which is the voxes, clarinets, oboes, brassy trumpets, and the percussion family, you can see it is very much as why they were called the uh, unit orchestra. They were literally mimicking the orchestras of the day. So have fun with that, and it's great fun to make up your own presets. We'll have a look at how we can blend those tones in another video very, very soon. But in the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching, and uh, have fun uh, learning about the different families of instruments uh, that you'll find in a theatre organ. By the way, just to finish off with, um, you have to think of your theatre organ a bit like a band. The more ranks it has, the more possibly tonal variety you might enjoy. And so if you're playing a 25 rank four manual Wurlitzer, um, you'll probably think of that as a nice orchestra, whereas a two manual 10 rank organ would be a little bit more of an ensemble of say 10 musicians. So you have to think in different ways. But the fundamentals are pretty much always the same. You'll always have a tibia, a flute, um, a string and a reed. You probably have a vox. So in the really small organs, uh, that that is very nice and of course there are some registration videos on my youtube channel keyboard skills pro if you want to learn a little bit more about registration so i'll say cheerio thanks ever so much for uh listening and uh, watching hope you've enjoyed it and let's finish off with a little piece of music here we go mm -hmm.